Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the preview of the Gamification Bootcamp, of course, organized, proudly organized by Conversology, where we fast track your way to engagement design. Now, for part one, of course, for the session, we have Alina Tudorake, an NLP architect who has eight years under her belt and implemented business strategies such as organizational entities, NLP says business, and more. And of course, the next half of the session, we will have Manuel Lemos, who manages um, Icontem and maintains PHP classes, a website community that reached 1.2 million users and implements gamification on techniques to increase engagement of its members. So it's pretty game on in the next 15 and 30 minutes for all uh, for both of the speakers. My name is Jam Mayer, of course, representing Conversology. And before we introduce or have our speakers, of course, show their presentation, um, I will just go through a very very short uh, orientation to newbies because every time we have our virtual events we always have a few or not actually a few um, first time webinar virgins as we call them and we'd like you to engage during the session all right so as of course firstly the attendee control panel as soon as you enter the room you would have seen that there is that little control panel and there is that rectangle at the left where you can use during the session. Um, what is important, of course, is can you hear us or can you or will you be able to hear the speakers? Um, you can use or attend the webinar. Go to webinar, of course, to an iPad um, through a PC and a Mac. So these are screenshots that you can use in order to check your setup. Um, on an iPad, it's on the uh, upper right, of course, and just uh, click on mic and speakers. We are using VoIP tonight. And uh, for a PC, all you have to do, of course, is to just check on settings. And during, um, you can also, I should say, I should tell you that you should choose what headset or speakers that you're actually using for tonight. Um, to check if that's working, you can click on play sound and adjust the volume level. Now for Mac, of course, just click on go to meeting or go to webinar. On top, the menu has an audio option and you can click on input or output depending on what you have. Now please do engage with us. You do have the questions window and this is where you can communicate with us and the team at Conversology of course. Um, and you do have several buttons to maximize the presentation. Just click on that square over there. And at any point in the webinar session, if we need you to raise your virtual hand, we will not be able to see you raise your hand, but virtually you can click on that button with that um, hand over there that has the green arrow going up. Now, please take note. Once you click on that, that is going to change to a red arrow, which means that your hand or virtual hand is up. And everyone is on mute tonight, but we will definitely turn that on during the Q&A session. Lastly, I know you don't want to hear my voice anymore and want to get into the content. For a smoother online experience, please no, download, uh, no downloading or um, Please close all YouTube or video sharing sites, no streaming if we can. Close multiple browsers and of course any chat windows. You can attend a webinar through a wireless connection, but if you can um, connect through a LAN cable, that will be fantastic. Or any program that affects bandwidth, please if you could disable it during the session. Now we will also be on um, Twitter if you would like to join us. Um, uh, please go to twitter.com. and. Um, you can use the hashtag gamification, of course, if you have any questions or would like to interact with us. So enough of me talking, of course. Um, I would like now to start off. Let me just close my presentation at this point. And I would like to now welcome, of course, both of our speakers first. Uh, we have Alina and Manuel. Hi, Alina, and hi, Manuel. Thank you again so much for being here and giving this preview webinar. How is everyone? Hello, Jan. That's hi. me. Alina, yes. Go on, Manuel. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, all right. So let me just put Manuel on mute at this point, and then um, Alina, of course, if you are ready, I um, have given you presenter rights, and you can show your presentation. 
Hello all, hello Jam, hello Conversology team, and welcome to the outline of the first webinar in the world on NLP and gamification. I uh, invite you all today to be part in a global change regarding the use of NLP and gamification together. So are you ready? You will get an insight and discover the turbocharger for your business raising superpowers in the process of change and gain a clear optic on the employees' roles nurturing competition. Are you ready for change? Now look at your hands and choose thumbs up level. Now the first objective for us uh, is to reach anchoring employees and turbocharger for your business. For start, I will draw a simple line between NLP and gamification. So what is in fact NLP? Neuro-linguistic programming is an activity of thinking, communicating and behaving congruently with ourselves and efficiently in rapport with others. The field of communication is a powerful and practical guide for life mastery and it can be used in self-development, business practices, education and much more. But the magic inside NLP is that it allows you to gain more than you deposit. As for gamification, it is an engine for game mechanics and design tools in any environment not related to games. It can be applied in real, concrete spaces, inbound or outbound, websites, metaverse platforms and so on. Here is how these two approach each other. Gamification is a mix of processes designed to be human focused with the use of game mechanics and dynamics. NLP on the other side is a wide area comprising human mechanics and dynamics. So just as a game has no real purpose without its players, gamification without the NLP approach can only deliver experiences which are not really meaningful and engaging for the players. Now let's see further. In this slide, I am suggesting to you the anchoring employees as a turbocharger for business and seeing further how I will allow you to get a peek on how NLP and gamification are working hand in hand to boost employees' motivation in companies or in online spaces. Turbocharging employees' motivation in order to obtain effective and efficient productivity and performance is the ultimate level for the internal mechanism of any business. In order to create motivation, loyalty, satisfaction, competitiveness and the sense of belonging, businesses have to integrate anchoring as an element of gamification to engage employees in a vibrant, transparent and attractive workplace. And uh, I have even more for you related to anchoring and employees. As you can see here, we are talking about the magic circle, which you might know from the gamification field. At this point, you will learn how to use NLP anchoring tool in the gamified experiences. Any anchor creates a reality for your employees. It transmits chunks of information to the employee, which he can rely on and uh, when working, taking decisions also. Therefore, great empowering anchors through the use of gamification will allow the employees appealing experience and provide them incentives for actively playing. The employee will keep navigating for game mechanics in this anchoring organizational environment. I will teach you how to use the models for VACOG and, and many more to turn your employees into players. Now, as you can see here, using the gamification approach, the most powerful anchor in which an employee can find himself at the zenith of his motivation is the magic circle. The magic circle in gamification is the real space or the virtual one where the games actually take place. Here players are engaged, active and they start developing themselves as part of the game itself. The mind map that you see right now 
pre uh, present and let you see how you can work with these two concepts of magic circle and anchoring to engage employees at their maximum in the process of motivation. We will go for the entire cake of anchoring and gamification in May and you will discover that just as a turbocharger the magic circle in gamification needs power of loyalty, fuel of productivity and maximum speed of performance from the employees as players. How do you see this? The new organizational slash air turns into hero, heroes resources. So we won't have the simple human resources, we will have the heroes resources. When deciding to implement a gamified structure in any company, this means designing and implementing change. This change always has a direct impact on the employees. In gamification, we must be aware that the path on which change processes are taking for the employees is directly influencing the major change for the company itself. At this stage, you will learn how to change your employees into superheroes by enhancing their superpowers with NLP and gamification design and mechanics. The next objective for you to gain more through this webinar is to present you neurological levels model and how it works as a framework for gamification design. I will lift up the curtain for you to understand how this model works for employees to develop their superpowers once they have chosen to enter the magic circle experience, achieving a much greater mission than they did before in their workplace. Now for the next slide, think about it. The final gift I shall offer you all will get you involved in a chasing quest for the identity and skills of the killer type of player. Which do you think the secret of the killer player is in gamification? Think about it. It is a general question and it is meant to be like this. So think about it from different, different angles and let's see what you can come up with. Think about it now and we can discuss it after this, the webinar outline. At the final step, I will reveal how the killer is in fact a surviving effective employee who becomes a leader in his field offering himself as a model for others and as a coach for his peers. You will discover the threats for your killer players and company once they have reached the top of their experiences. But I will make sure you will know how to redesign the gamification framework with NLP tools so that your top players, the killers, will remain loyal, boost the success of your company and re-engage in the magic circle with a passionate fidelity. Thank you. <laughs> I invite you all to step into this May experience and play for the next level with NLP and gamification techniques. Thank you all for your attendance today and see you soon. Thanks, Alina. That's a really good outline. Now, um, before we move on, I would like to go back to the audience um, uh, tonight, and most of them obviously are in Europe. Um, for me, it's in the morning here in New Zealand. If you have any questions, um, please, um, about the outline, about the, the preview that Alina has just mentioned earlier and discussed, please type in your questions at this point. Or if you would like us to hear your voice during the session, please, you can click on the raise your hand button so we can see your virtual hands actually. Up. So are you excited um, um, in two, I think uh, the event's going to be two and a half weeks from now, are you pumped up and excited to present, of course, this whole outline on NLP and employee motivation, Alina? Yeah, I'm very excited, Jem, because actually I'm writing a book on uh, using the best practices for NLP in uh, any gamified experience structure. Because I believe that um, NLP is a healthy tool for using gamification ethically and with consideration for the human values. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about this, having some, um, of course, during my career, um, 
have done training, which is very, very close uh, to HR or human resources. So this is something I really look forward to on May. Now, here are some questions, by the way. Um, can you give us a little bit of um, a taste, so to speak, of what anchoring tools are for those in the audience that are not NLP practitioners? All right. In the May webinar, I will uh, I will start from the basis. I will explain you all how to use the information filtering, visual through visual channels, auditive channels, feeling, touching, smelling, and so on. But I will go even farther and have an entire complex chapter for you as an objective, explaining how this enhancing senses that we have get get us as players into the magic circle and how they can function together to to keep the player in that uh, in those loops in the gaming loops create loyalty enhance motivation and so on but the basis of this anchoring tool will be the magic circle and uh, like a potion a mag a magic <laughs> a magic tool for gamification to keep the employees in their workplace satisfied. I will even talk about the rewarding the joker, the joker, the one who makes a lot of jokes, who feels himself at home at the workplace, at his desk. So I will talk about a meta position, let's call it so, that is the main position for anchoring, like you will feel at your workplace like you will feel would feel at home or in a friendly environment. So I will draw this line between work and home, just like a few years before someone draw a line before between work and leisure. Now we will do something else. We will uh, understand how anchoring works for employees to make them feel better at their workplace and to boost their performance. Fantastic. Okay. If you don't mind, um, just to make sure, can you go back to your um, first or second slide? Um, just for yeah. reference for the audience. Fantastic. Okay. Sure, sure. Perfect. In just a second. So it's going to be the second? Definitely. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And another question, of course, is um, there is a slide wherein it says um, by using anchoring tools, you do have the sense of smell. So since it is going to be a virtual event, um, we're wondering how uh, or will you actually show us or how are we going to are we going to smell anything during the webcast on May? Uh, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> Well, about the smell, you, I am sure you will smell something in the May webinar because I will make you aware of the environment that you have right, right then uh, at your desk or at home and make you aware of that meta position I told you where you feel comfortable. So, yeah, I will make you aware of the environment and one item in any environment, it's smelling and how it smells. That wh that's why it's very important for us to be in <laughs> back with, backgrounds with a uh, good smell, yeah? Okay, well that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, I would love to know, I mean, how taste, hear, touch, see, smell, all those five senses would um, be beneficial, of course, in boosting employees' motivation through NLP and through gamification. Um, we do have just a few more minutes um, before we move on to Manuel. Is there anything that you would like to tell the audience tonight, today, this morning? We are around the world. Um, anything that they should take away before we move on to Manuel? Yep. Through the webinar in May, I will give you not only a scheme, a framework, a tool set to use NLP with gamification. I will give you, I will offer you more than this. I will offer you uh, the means through which you can start using gamification and NLP, NLP together just after the webinar finishes. So be sure you will gain something 
from this time investition you will put to spend together with me and along with other trainees. And another thing is that it's going to be the first webinar in the world on NLP touching the gamification aspect and getting into it, relating to it. So get ready to be um, a promoter, an advocate of this. Yes, because you will be the first ones taking advantage of the uh, first webinar in the world on NLP and gamification. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Alina, so much. Um, we will now move on, of course, to Manuel. Let's hope he is ready to go. Uh, hang on. And we'll make her in presenter, of course. And yes, you can keep your webcam open <laughs> 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 while we listen to Manuel, of course. Manuel, are you there? Hey, Manuel, you are up and we've given you presenter rights. Are you good to go? Hi, can you listen to me? I can hear you there. Perfect. Um, you are good to yeah. go, Manuel. Yep. Cool. And Andrea, okay. uh, Andrea Smith actually did say, I can hear you. I hear you. <laughs> um, okay, let me, let's see if you can see this. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, I, we can, and you uh, you'll be able to actually see that on your audience preview in case. It's yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you see the slideshow now? <laughs> yes, we can definitely, and we would Is love to see you as well, Manuel. If you can turn on your webcam. There Hi. you go. <laughs> Well, okay, I have a minor problem with the computer, but I think it's now back on. Well, th thank you for having me on this webinar. It is for me a great pleasure to to talk uh, about these topics related with uh, gamification in general. Uh, it seems that gamification has been uh, something that I have done a lot for the last, I uh, would say, 14 years. but. Um, uh, only in the last three years, uh, people start calling it gamification. Uh, first, I'll uh, just uh, tell you a bit uh, about why I'm going to talk about this uh, topic of engaging um, communities in uh, of websites using gamification. Is that uh, I've always been a software developer since I was uh, a teenager. Uh, I started working um, uh, with uh, software development when I was 13. I even developed uh, some some games with some friends, but uh, I was not uh, commercially su successful. And then I turned on to more uh, serious software development. And later, um, when the web start uh, becoming more important, I, I became a web developer. And uh, in that activity. I um, work with a, a language, a programming language named PHP, and that language uh, is used for developing websites. And I start developing my own components that uh, would be useful um, uh, to use in different applications that I develop. And I thought uh, it would be interesting to share those components with the rest of the world because. Um, uh, that way I could get some feedback of users who test my components and see if they they um, um, would address their needs and eventually find and report bugs and that feedback would be helpful to me so I decided to create a site on which I I would um, share those components and what happens is that um, I thought also well what if I use this site to actually uh, let others also share their components. I'm sure they probably have other components. We could all reuse each other components and save a lot of time and work. So that was when I created a site named PHP Classes, which is a site that you can check later if you want. I won't uh, show much of the site itself because it's not the the purpose of this um, presentation. I just talk uh, uh, and give examples uh, of that site um, showing uh, some screens uh, as uh, a means to demonstrate how some gamification uh, methods could be uh, uh, used to engage the audience. And um, 
that's uh, that's where my experience uh, with gamification started like 14 years ago in 1999 I, I created this website and um, I'll uh, gather a lot of the experience uh, I know many things that work and many things that don't work and that's my hope is to share the knowledge that I gather so uh, j just uh, I will show a bit uh, about uh, what will be this presentation uh, in this preview I just can only show part of what it will be uh, uh, first uh, just an overview of what will be what will the, the agenda of this presentation and basically I'll start talking about um, communities in general why communities can be useful uh, I also cover a little bit about what uh, gamification is and uh, what is not because there is a lot of confusion uh, about the, uh, the gamification concepts then I move on to a, a, a section on which I try to explain in simpler terms the, the human needs and uh, what motivates people to engage uh, in you know, uh, uh, communities in general and uh, that uh, 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 is uh, a sort of introduction of the actual uh, juice of the presentation on which I'll be, um, uh, I'll say, uh, presenting several um, approaches, several artifacts on which um, uh, people can use to engage their communities. So let's uh, see a bit more on this so um, we can um, uh, understand uh, what exactly uh, is, will be the details of what I'll be presenting. First talk a bit uh, about communities. Communities are, are often a way to reach a lot of, of people and traditionally companies try to use um, mass media to uh, and pay them to uh, advertise products, uh, services, uh, businesses in general, but uh, an alternative to, to, to reach uh, a lot of people uh, in a given moment it would be, for instance, if companies invested in building communities um, um, made uh, people the, that uh, you have your products, uh, you want to reach them, uh, want to target the, the, those communities with special, specific needs. Uh, so my, my 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 proposal is for people to reflect uh, that communities are an alternative way to reach a lot of people uh, at the same time. And uh, uh, then I would like also people to reflect a bit uh, uh, about how communities are formed now these days. Nowadays, people tend to form communities in, in social networks. Uh, well, I mentioned here uh, social ne networks in a broader sense, but in practice, I would say Facebook because it's a very dominant uh, social network and it's totally overwhelming the volume, the number of people that go there and. Uh, participate in their own communities of friends or, or of specific interests. So if you want to build a community, how do you build it inside a social network? And that is possible. Uh, Facebook allows um, uh, people to embed sites inside of Facebook and call them applications. Or you build them on your own site. Uh, what happens is that uh, people go, tend to go to social networks because they they are very um, very engaging there, provide lots of fun. So uh, if you want to people to uh, go to your website, you have to provide better fun, and this is uh, the, the main aspect on which gamification can help. And then I move on to a section which I try to to explain in simpler terms the, the human needs, as I mentioned before. This is very important to, to talk before presenting the gamification aspects themselves because if you don't understand the human needs, you, you hardly uh, will be able to 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 take advantage of uh, the gamification principles, you need to understand what you are doing, how you are motivating, and why it works. So I'll present three different perspectives uh, of uh, human needs. One, uh, bringing up a, a phrase of Juvenal. Juvenal is a poet of the Roman Empire days. You had a phrase uh, that in, in simpler terms would mean the, that uh, what people want is bread and circuses. Bread is a symbol of, uh, of the most vital needs, 
not just food, but everything else. And the uh, circus is a symbol of entertainment. And this, this, this is a relation uh, with gamification because uh, gamification uh, uh, is aimed to uh, make things more fun, more engaging. And um, then I talk also about the Bartle player types, and this is a very important um, model um, of how you, uh, people can um, interact, how, how they like to engage, and how the, they have fun. And uh, in the end, I'll uh, talk, make a very brief relation between the Bartel player types and uh, the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Um, talking about the Bartel player types, uh, as I said, it's the most important model that is more helpful when you want to design gamification experiences. It just divides the people, uh, personalities uh, that uh, that uh, engage, not just in games, but can also be applied in real world um, environments on which gamification is applied. Um, uh, there are four types, the, the killers, the achievers, explorers, and socializers. I'll try to explain how these uh, four types of uh, players, uh, as we call them, uh, uh, engage and uh, interact uh, with each other, uh, as well tell you a, a bit uh, of a perspective of the proportion, how they are distributed um, in, the, in the communities in, in general, not just specifically in games, which was the original uh, environment on which Bartow studied these player types. Then uh, I move on and talking about how, how communities work. Uh, I'll give uh, several definitions uh, talking about uh, a, a relationship uh, between people that uh, participate. They are usually suppliers and consumers. Suppliers provide some value, could be content, could be knowledge, could be some other uh, service. And uh, there are consumers. There are there is a, a, a proportion because between them, usually suppliers are only a minority because it depends. Uh, it's it's a more difficult uh, task to supply something than to consume uh, the the actual uh, product or service that is being provided. Then I start talking a bit more uh, in particular about uh, turning uh, visitors into community website members. Uh, here I start talking about BJ Fogg, which is uh, a Stanford PhD. He, is, uh, he sort of devised this behavior change theory because if you have uh, people visiting your site, if you want to turn them into community members that uh, engage regularly, you have to change their behavior. They start uh, uh, need to start interacting somehow. So we define three conditions for people to engage: uh, motivation, ability, and trigger. And I, I'll try to explain more in detail during this presentation um, uh, what are uh, each of these conditions and how you can turn your uh, communities uh, 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 members to engage so they can uh, actually become regular members. Then I, I start talking more specifically about gamification in practice. I'll talk about rewards. Um, uh, Gabe Zickerman, a well-known gamification expert, is an organizer of the Gamification Summit and many, many other gamification initiatives. He, he defines rewards in in, in, in four perspectives. The SAPS, which basically uh, means status, access, uh, power, and uh, staff. And I'll tell you more in detail how um, these, these values uh, that make people um, uh, engage more, motivate them to, to participate, and how can, you can apply them uh, in practice in uh, your sites. Then I start talking uh, about uh, gamification artifacts. There are many types of artifact, artifacts, and there will be a lot to, to say in about gamification, how you can implement these, these artifacts in your sites. I'll only cover a few, some of which I have implemented in my, uh, in my sites, but uh, there are certainly, certainly more that I haven't uh, implemented uh, and I certainly would like to implement and let me tell you that I get very anxious to to implement the things like this in my site because 
uh, uh, the perspective of engaging more and more people and making the, the sites more interesting in the, in the community, making the communities grow, uh, it's very exciting and uh, but it all takes time and that's why I get anxious because I want to do a lot of things uh, at the same time but uh, in the end uh, for all the time that it takes, uh, it's a bit frustrating that uh, I would like to implement uh, this all, but uh, in this presentation I'll give you uh, 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 several types of gamification artifacts. Some are more common like points, badges and leaderboards, but others are not so common, but they have a great power to engage people, like implementing systems of reputations and privileges. Uh, also, um, systems of missions and levels to implement what is called the path, the path to mastery, on, on which people uh, feel that they are becoming more and more important, and they are feel that they, they they are becoming masters in something that they do in their communities. I also talk about. Um, uh, uh, things that you can do to promote collaboration, forming teams and uh, presenting challenges to groups so they can uh, feel motivated to cooperate between them. Uh, and finally, uh, a different way to, to gather people is to, uh, to attract a, ma a massive audience is to organize championships uh, on which the best players can participate and um, actually uh, engage uh, in activities like competitions between them and uh, this uh, attracts not only the, the people to the competition but also their fans. This is very common uh, in, in, for instance in sports as you can, for instance soccer. Soccer is a very popular sport and attracts massive audiences to large stadiums that with many thousands of people that just go there and um, cheer for the, the, the players. And uh, this is basically what I'm going to present. And ju just to give a taste of what I'm going to present, for instance, when the part on which I uh, talk about uh, points, badges, and leaderboards. I'm going to f present a, a, a different, less common way to to present leaderboards, uh, which is providing details of your the users that are participating in your site. In this slide, as you may see um, uh, here, this is the profile of a, a, a player, a, a contributor on my site. I mean, my site, as uh, as Jim mentioned. Uh, uh, it has reached in 14 years to near 1.2 million uh, subscribers, but as I said, only a, a small part will engage and participate in, in the activities that, that require some more proactivity contributing content and sharing knowledge. And this is the profile that you may see here of a user. In this case, it is a user from Finland. I would like just to bring your attention to several details that I'm presenting here. Uh, uh, below, uh, let me see if I can highlight some here, something here. You see some information of rankings. And uh, these this, this, this numbers are very important to motivate people. Uh, as you may see, there is a all time rank on which uh, people, uh, uh, th in the case of this uh, user, is, is number 21. But in the last week, he performed so well that he's number five. So I show this error here that uh, represents the, uh, a trend, a trend that this uh, user is growing. This is how helps him to motivate. And another aspect is that uh, when I present these uh, details of users, I can also restrict the, their 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 ranking uh, numbers to just the users of a specific region, like a country. And uh, uh, here in this uh, case, this user is from Finland, and it happens that he is number one in, in Finland, despite he's uh, uh, just number five in last week uh, in the all users of the site. Uh, he's in Finland, he's, he's sort of uh, the leader, and the fact that he is a leader in his own country is very motivating. This is also motivating to other uh, users, being contributors or not, uh, because they will. Uh, some of them will be proud that his fellow uh, 
of his uh, his country is number one, and the others will see how oh, I'd like to be number one too, and I can be number one. I may not be the number one in my, the whole site, but I can be on number one in my country, and that will be very very satisfying, very pleasant. Uh, I have all uh, other uh, aspects that I'll talk more in detail during the presentation. As you may you may notice here on the side, there is uh, there is some information. There is a badge that shows that this uh, this user. Uh, participated in the, what I call the Innovation Award. It's, it's a great initiative that I implemented in the site to um, encourage users to not only contribute content but contribute content that is innovative because innovative content is more more valuable. And uh, uh, in this case, this user participated uh, several times and he was nominated to this Innovation Award a couple of times. And this is great because this user um, uh, uh, is a, a more valuable user for the whole community. And uh, this this badge here that uh, is just a symbol, it's not the graphic itself, but it's, it's what it means. Uh, uh, ends up being very encouraging and motivating for this user to continue and also to other users to that aim to have uh, this level of recognition in the site. This is just uh, to give an idea. They have other uh, examples in the presentation and we don't have time this, in this um, overview, but uh, I'll just like to give you a, a taste of um, what this presentation would be. And uh, I, in the end, uh, I'll, I'll talk about other things like um, uh, implementing a system of missions and levels. This, is, this has been great. Uh, I wouldn't have time to talk about this in, in detail, but uh, I would like to just um, to, to just show you a, a screen that gives you an idea of, of the action that goes on on the side. There will be progress bars that show how much people will have done and how far they have um, they, they have gone and what is missing to complete the levels. There are there are there are uh, more details about the missions they have to complete and there are some graphical aspects here that highlight the important things that. The users need to pay attention, and uh, this is just uh, to give uh, another example of things that I have implemented in, in my sites. And the, if you have a community site, you can implement them as well. Uh, implementing these things on the, uh, uh, your communities may take uh, require some investment, but in the end, is worth it. In the end, I'll talk. Um, uh, more uh, in detail about common mistakes. This is just a brief overview of many uh, mistakes that people uh, uh, implement, including myself. This is a, a sort of reflection of the mistakes that I have made during um, the implementation of my site. And uh, uh, I, we don't have time to cover all these aspects here. It will be have to be done in the actual uh, presentation at, at the end. And um, this is just to give you an overview of what I uh, will be presenting. I hope it's exciting for you that will be attending to the, the webinar, um, as it is has been exciting for me because the, the results that uh, you can uh, extract from implementing these gamification initiatives can be really awesome. Gamification really works. It's not a fad. It's something that uh, is is very helpful. And um, with this, uh, I end this my uh, this overview of my presentation. I don't know um, if anybody uh, has questions uh, would like to ask for now. And um, well, uh, th this is it. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Manuel. That has been very, I've been taking down notes actually as well. So good. Now, um, just keep your slide um, up if you could. With regards to common mistakes, yeah. the question is, is there, based on your experience in your community um, at PHP classes, is there like a top one from, uh, from the list? Oh well, well, I would say well. This probably requires to explaining what I mentioned before the Bartle types. The Bartle types uh, they divide um, people in sort of four, gr four groups. They they are not four groups of people that are sort of four groups of 
types of motivations that pe people have. And the, the, the number one mistake that I probably did is to focus uh, on encouraging one specific type of user, uh, which was the type achiever. Uh, and the reason why I focused, uh, well, nowadays I see that as a mistake, but when I, I was doing it, I was, I was not aware, is that I am also an achiever. It's my main profile is to achieve. I like to reach goals. Uh, I like to take challenges and uh, complete the, those challenges. And um, uh, like myself, there are many others that contribute to my site that also are achievers. And the, the problem is that achievers is, are probably like only 10% of the total of the users that come to my site. And that is probably why there is only a minority of the, the users that actually uh, engage on the site somehow. And that is the, uh, the this, well, I see this a mistake because uh, it's, a, it's a waste of opportunity to engage others in more um, interesting activities that you can also can share value with the others. So, uh, in the latest times, I'm, I've been implementing uh, other things that engage other types of users, not just uh, achievers like myself. Uh, for instance, uh, right now, I'm, I hope to sh show more about this in the presentation because it's, it's still a work in progress, but I'm implementing a, a system uh, of reputation that um, considers the points that people have gathered uh, throughout many activities in the site and they will um, sort of um, uh, uh, be able to redeem privileges based on the points that they earned and uh, the, 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 they can gather points not just as uh, contributors that share content but uh, doing other activities like for instance rating the content which is also valuable because it uh, helps people to uh, realize what content is more valuable and what is not and uh, I, I hope with this uh, different focus that uh, we'll try to reach a broader audience not just the achievers also socializers and and uh, explorers and killers uh, it will uh, in the end have a, a greater overall effect and I would say that is this was the number one mistake that I made and uh, I hope people will learn uh, also from my mistake and uh, do not make that mistake uh, uh, as well in the communities and sites that they are trying to build. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, let's move on first to Alina. Alina, are you still, I can see, still see you, so are you doing okay on your side? I do have some questions uh, for you when you're ready oh, okay <laughs> all right okay and I might have to actually give you presenter right in case just make sure here so with regards to the secret of the killer the secret of uh, of the killer now just to make sure the audience don't start calling the police or whatever <laughs> that we are encouraging people to be killers um, I will unmute your mic of course um, can you explain a little bit more when you say um, a killer and um, Manuel has actually a slide earlier that showed the different um, player types and why is the killer again important um, as a as you said um, is one of the top player types for employee motivation within the um, corporate culture for example or organizational culture yeah, I will make a little bit of light here, just a little bit, and lift up the curtain for you all, because it's going to be a surprise after all. It has to be. So, yeah, um, that that's a picture with me a few years ago. <laughs> and uh, I have to say that, uh, from my part, the term killer as a type of player is a bit um, not flexible. So I will be showing how this type of killer is in fact a very good observer. He models the strategies of others but he also brings up uh, innovation in his techniques of uh, approaching the gamified experience. He has the ability to um, notice 
and he has a very good optic, not like me. He has the ability to, to notice the game mechanics and dynamics from within the game itself, the gamified loops, but also from the outside, from the first position I told you before called meta, uh, that position where we all feel comfortable. Um, so he can very well be the, that type of employee who works uh, his norm for every day but doesn't bring innovation at first. He observes the others, he models their strategies, he brings up new elements and he can also see the organizational environment, objective, uh, mission, goals, vision along the way and so he can have a clear insight of what is happening and then he acts he, the killer, is planning, he's following his own strategy within the game and he has the ability to get out of the gamified loops from the anchoring magic circle and to breathe from time to time. He will be breathing, recollecting the experience ideas and um, he will uh, start to feel congruent, not just follow uh, the, the path like the others do. He will make his own path for his own goal, uh, but aligned with the organizational goals, vision, mission, and so on. So he is flexible, but also strong. And if you remember Bruce Lee, he said, be water, my friend. Yeah? <laughs> Okay, all right, that is interesting. Again, like um, Manuel's presentation, I've been taking down uh, notes and I am interested to know um, the secret of the killer. Again, audience, we are not killing anyone here. This is just a term. <laughs> right, Alina? I just wanted yeah. to reassure the yeah, audience. Yeah, it's just a term. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Can I add just something also about killers, just to help clarifying? Uh, well, killers are just competitive people. They uh, they want to win at, ex at the expense of somebody losing. And uh, there are many types of killers. Not all killers are alike. Killers is just a, probably not a very <laughs> very clarifying name because. Um, People may uh, uh, think that they are they are not necess they are necessarily hostile, and sometimes they are not hostile. Um, one type of good killer that I see in this case is very helpful on sites is the, the moderators that they can help to find uh, uh, good content and highlight it and uh, fi find bad content and. Uh, demote it. So uh, they can be helpful to uh, organizing uh, sites and, and uh, content uh, that people contribute and uh, help people see what could be, uh, for instance, abuses, for instance, people that are just sending spam or or promoting some activity that is not of the interest of the community and this, that is a type of killer that can be very useful. Uh, during my presentation I'll talk a bit more about this but I think uh, this will be enough to clarify what, uh, um, what a good killer can be. I hope. Uh, what do you think, Jam? Yep. Okay, thank you so much, Manuel. Now, um, of course, we only have two minutes before we close the webinar. Um, this is, again, a preview. We'd like to, um, the audience, to actually get to know more of the speakers. Uh, let Again, thank you so much, Manuel and Alina, for taking the time this hour to um, give sort of, you know, a sneak peek. And as Alina has put it earlier, um, to open the curtains a little bit um, on what you both have to offer on May 15 and 16. By the way, we will have the full-blown webcasts, of course, for um, both of these experts. Um, if you are interested on NLP and gamification in order to boost employee motivation, I am now putting um, a definitely the link for everyone if you'd like to know more about it. 
and of course if you are interested in web communities and how to engage them by uh, via gamification um, this is the links and uh, the link as well for more information and that is Manuel's um, webcast schedules and um, everything in the whole program is there and on behalf of Conversology again thank you to those who registered um, even um, given the very very short notice of course for this preview uh, we appreciate the people who are in the room I will mention just some of them of course and please forgive me if I do pronounce your names um, incorrectly we have Renee we have Tom Andrea of course Adrian Nina Luliana and so on um, um, we hope to see you at our main event, May 15 and 16. And Manuel and Alina, game on. Are we guys ready for May 15 and 16? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, again, thank you so much, everyone. And in order to leave the webinar, please click on File, Leave Webinar. This is Jam Mayer, of course, on behalf of Conversology. Have a good night, good day, or good afternoon, wherever in the world.